In this particular video, we're going to look at the climatic system evolution over the next few decades, but not only the temperature increase on the Earth's surface, but other aspects will be envisaged. The water cycle, the carbon cycle, ocean evolution, and uh, continental surfaces. On this first slide, you see how the climate models have evolved over the last few decades. More processes have been taken into consideration, more components in the climatic system. Therefore, we can make projections for all the components. The water cycle is one of the essential components in the climate system. Climate models show that the uh, water cycle is going to be amplified in response to climatic changes. On the right-hand side, you see how rain is going to change in reaction to climatic changes. At the end of the century, in 2100, climate models forecast amplification of rain in wet areas and uh, average latitudes in the equatorial belt and decreased rains in subtropical areas, uh, dry areas. Two maps showing the two extreme scenarios, RCP 85, uh, where gas emissions are substantial until the end of the century, and RCP 2.6, where gas emissions are decreased by the end of the century. Now, changes in the rain distribution are more obvious in terms of uh, amplification and reduction in the RCP 8.5 scenario. Second aspect of the climatic uh, aspect, evolution in the cryosphere and the uh, ice-covered areas. Models project a huge decrease in the extension of the ice cap in the Arctic. For instance, the summer ice sheet, we see the change between now and 2100 of the uh, ice sheet in September. For the RCB 8.5 scenario, the summer Arctic ice sheet will disappear between now and the half of the 21st century, whereas in the RCB 2.6 scenario, the climatic uh, change will allow the uh, ice cap to remain in the summer. It will be smaller, but it will still be there. Confirmed by the two maps on the right-hand side, at the end of the 21st century, no more summer ice cap in the uh, 8.5 scenarios, whereas there's still some ice sheet in the 2.5 scenario. Other aspects have been modeled with uh, climate uh, models. For instance, the snow in the Northern Hemisphere, there will be changes, and in some cases, this is also impacting the uh, polar cap in the Antarctic area. Now, the ocean is also an important component. Models project an increase in the uh, temperature thermal content of the ocean due to the uh, greenhouse effect more than 90% of the additional heat will be absorbed by the oceans, and this is going to lead to increased temperatures in the ocean, and uh, the surface of our oceans will continue uh, heating up during the next few decades. Not only, but the models also project rising sea levels due partly to the fact that the oceans are absorbing energy, thermal dilation, but also connected with the uh, melting uh, ice cap. Sea level increase at the end of the century would uh, reach one meter in the RCP 8.5 scenario. For the 2.6 scenario, the increase we only, would only be say, uh, 40 to 50 centimeters by the end of the century. Last component in the climatic component, in the, in the model simulated, here we have the uh, carbon uh, cycle evolution. We see the carbon cycle in the natural reservoirs, such as the ocean and the continental land. Two examples on the right-hand side, pH evolution on the surface layer of the ocean, due to the fact that the ocean continues absorbing anthropic carbon. CO2 is a low acid, and therefore the ocean uh, will uh, lose uh, several units of pH by the year 2000. 2100, and on the bottom map we see the changes in the uh, 
forest-covered areas in the world with many changes due to climatic changes and the fact that some areas will become drier. Finally, thanks to simulation of the CO2 cycle, the carbon cycle and uh, the temperature increase, the uh, Earth system will allow to establish a relationship between uh, cumulative emissions of CO2 and temperature increases. The relationship demonstrated by the Earth system models is almost linear. If we uh, add up uh, the CO2 emissions ever since the beginning of the industrial area, the model will project a heat increase uh, which can be seen uh, on the graph on the right hand side. And this simple graph shows us some uh, simple observations. If we want to inc limit the uh, temperature increase to two degrees in average, Globally, the graph shows that uh, total carbon emissions must be lower than 1,000 billion tons of carbon. Knowing that we've already emitted 500, 550,000, in order to limit our, the uh, temperature increase, we have to limit ourselves to 400, 450 billion tons of carbon for the next century.